I kind of wonder how Justin's going to play with that Grim Snarl if if they even bring it to this particular match. Talking about Grim Snarl with a number of people early on as people have been experimenting with it. Some players talk about what's called four move slot syndrome, where really you don't have as many move slots as you want moves. Mm -hmm. And I think Grimstyle is maybe one of the worst Pokemon for that, in that it has <laughs> so at least double digits of good usable moves to select from. And you, you have to pick four. So you really have to narrow it down to exactly what you want to do on your team uh, and go from there. The leads are on the field, though. We've got a Togekiss mirror with Grimstyle on Justin's side and Charizard over on Aaron's. Would love to see what this Charizard can do, but this really means that this turn one is going to be important. Who's going to go for what here? Are the, are the Togekiss is going to try to go for maybe something like a follow me or try to set something else up like... We've seen a couple, I think, with Tailwind. So that is just a weird tech to have, but that's not going to be what we see at first. We're going to go ahead and start out with a turn one Dynamax and wait. Yeah, it's, it's, coming, it? it's coming from Aaron's oh, side. It's going to be a Gigantamax Charizard. Yep, Gigantamax Charizard could cause some really big problems if it's left unchecked. Uh, interesting to see it partnered up with the Togekiss. Uh, probably trying to play a little bit differently. I think Follow Me would be a really good option. But it's not going to be just one Dynamax. Even though Justin hasn't got his most offensive threats on the field, uh, he has decided that we need a bigger Togekiss. We need to make sure <laughs> that it can take hits, get that really nice boost to its health. And, you know, you don't want to miss out on being able to use your Dynamax well. And if you're staring one down, hey, there's one way to take those hits. Boost your own health bar. Absolutely. Grimstarl, though, going for a fake out into Aaron's Togekiss. Togekiss not going to be able to make a move here because we know that Dynamax Pokemon cannot get uh, flinched. But Max Airstream coming out from the Charizard does take that Grimstarl down to about half health, but more importantly, it's raising the speed of both Pokemon on the field, but Togekiss going to be able to match that with a max airstream of its own into Aaron's Togekiss, and that will also take it to about half. Yeah, I think that's really smart play, actually, is making sure that you keep up with the speed. We were talking before the game about Trick Rooms and Tailwinds, but Max Airstream is definitely one of the more popular max moves, I'd argue, because of that boost to the speed. Yes, you get it in a, a kind of strange fashion with the, the way that turns have been reordered, uh, but Grimstone is going to try and answer that. Grimstar going for a Thunder Wave that is going to paralyze this Gigantamax Charizard, but Togekiss going for a Yawn. That might put this Togekiss to sleep on Justin's side, but a Max Airstream is going to be enough to be able to finish off Aaron's Togekiss and knock it out. Yeah, I mean, Charizard now moving last. That change to how Thunder Wave operates, really, really nice. I don't think it's too impactful apart from if he gets paralyzed or not. But if he can attack through it, I think we're going to see kind of a very neutral uh, turn here. Charizard is going for a G-Max Wildfire instead, so not matching the speed. Uh, but Grimstar not sticking around after that one. Uh, I think that's one of the first G-Max moves I've seen on stream. Uh, really going to be impactful as well. I believe we got a chance to see a G-Max Wind Rage coming out from a Gigantamax Corviknight yesterday. But yes. <laughs> we, I, I mean, so you don't get a chance to see kind of the secondary effect of what that G-Max Wildfire actually does. Um, it actually puts you, I believe, in like, um, I think it traps you for a little bit, takes out some of your HP. Yeah, you, you get caught with a little bit extra damage, like the flames keep on going. And this turn could be interesting. Duraliodon coming in in the face of the Charizard, but a Duraliodon matching it over on Aaron's side. Of course, you've got a Steel-type attacker and you're looking at a Fairy-type, probably feeling pretty good about yourself in those regards. That said, though, the Togekiss is still in its Dynamax form, and uh, it's not going to be that easy to take out in the slightest. Well, Aaron's Duraludon going for a Protect, not going to try to go for an attack onto this Togekiss, but Togekiss once again getting a chance to use the Max Airstream will be able to go through the Protect on Aaron's side and also continue to boost this speed for Justin's side of the field. Yep, I mean, he's now over what a Trick Room would provide, a Trick Room and Tailwind would provide. He's got three Max Airstreams off every single turn. And Charizard oh, is Charizard's paralyzed. paralyzed. That's big. Uh, the big problem there is, you know, you wouldn't be able to, to get a big hit on Duraludon, but we do get to see how impactful uh, the G-Max Wildfire can be. That Duraludon already looking a lot more man uh, manageable. Uh, look at how much it does. It's a huge amount of uh, chip damage. It's more than something like the Life Orb would, would put back there. So this Duraludon could get worn down real quickly. Well, something else important to note is that that Yawn took effect. So Justin's Togekiss not only is going to be out of its Dynamax form, but it's also going to be asleep on the field. Yeah, it, it's it's not really 
doing as much now. I don't think the Togekiss is the concern. I think Aaron definitely wants to start dealing with that Duraliodon. Uh, the Duraliodon, a number of good options in this position. You know, it's moving before the Charizard, so it could go after it uh, with something like the Thunderbolt there. We did see it try and launch off that Draco Meteor uh, to deal with the opposing Duraliodon. Obviously, a little more afraid of that one because it's not paralyzed. The Charizard, he can kind of look at it and say, hey, I think you're going to be paralyzed for a few turns. I'm going to work on your partner every time. Well, the Intimidate certainly going to do a little bit for for that. But I, I think more importantly, you get a chance to have Arcanine out on the field and really pressure down the Duraludon that's on Aaron's side. But as we can see here, Dur Aaron doesn't want to keep the Duraludon in. Will be going for the switch out, but that blast onto the Togekiss is going to actually get trapped. It's, it's just caught there taking, you know, a little bit more. And Blast Burn, a really nice addition, I think, to Charizard. Yeah, Blast Burn is awesome. It's not the usual fire-type move, but it can do a good amount of damage. We see it there, bringing that Togekiss in a, a real sticky situation there. Uh, really low, kind of easy to pick off, I'd imagine, at this point. Uh, but one thing on John is the addition of Conkelda. If he can get rid of the Togekiss right now, I think this Conkelda could cause so many problems. Uh, it's going to do really well oh. against the Duraludon, and Conkelda putting its name into this game by avoiding the heat wave. Yeah, it is going to be avoiding the heat wave and Conkelder able to fire oh. back, but it misses the Togekiss. Does catch the Arcanine, bringing it pretty low, but still gonna get some residual damage with those wildfire flames. Yeah, look at how much G-Max wildfire does. It does so much damage to this Togekiss each turn. But even though he missed the rock slide, he still gets the knockout. And now this game is looking real favorable, I think, for the Conkelder. A uh, number of people looking at Conkelder and, and how it can kind of close out games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't have an easy way to hit Arcanine super effective. You've got to gamble with the rock slide there. But if you can get rid of the Arcanine, and then you've got Conkelder versus Duralidon, you're going to be able to start using Mac Punch, Drain Punch. Uh, Conkelder has pretty much every fighting attack you need. Uh, so he should be able to put himself in a good position that way. The Heat Waves not doing that much to Conkelder. Now, even with the critical hit, that's not doing very much. And Charizard going for an Air Slash really does read that Protect coming up from the Duraludon into the Arcanine. Um, but not so lucky for that Conkelder. Yeah, I mean, the Arcanine's going to be able to Heat Wave again. Uh, the critical hit doing that much damage to Conkelder is going to give a piece of information over to Justin about the item the Conkelder is carrying. And while I know some people have been a little bit upset on, on how you obtain a Flame Orb, it's not the easiest thing to get. They've looked for alternative items, and I think that is going to be important, particularly with the Arcanine using special attacks mm -hmm. and Duraludon being a special attacker. This Conqueror could be in a position to, to really try and, and close out the game, or at least put it in a position where Aaron's own Duraludon could just clean it up with ease. Ooh, Arcanine revealing that it also has Burn Up. Yeah, getting, getting rid of its fire typing. Yeah, it is going to do that. And Draco Meteor now just doubling into this Conkelder, seeing if it can get removed from the field, and it will get knocked out here. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be the way to do it. Uh, he's relying on maybe a little bit of paralysis over on the Charizard, which has just been on the field since turn one and doing as much as it can. Charizard blast burning once again, landing it on the Duraludon, and that's going to be an easy knockout right there. The critical hit making it a little bit sweeter. Critical hit, maybe just the, ch the cherry on top there. Uh, this Charizard really hasn't not been able to move. It, even there, with there the paralysis, it's been able to get off some very good attacks. Yeah, I mean, there was the one turn where it got fully paralyzed and wasn't able to do anything. But apart from that, yeah, it's been going last. But Justin's been kind of leaving it alone mm -hmm. for a long time. I mean, yeah, you can leave it alone when it's not able to, to do anything back. Arcadon's going to start the fight back now with Snarl, which is going to help against both of these Pokemon uh, on Aaron's side of the field. Uh, but I think this Duraludon probably able to just tidy up this game and put Aaron Trailer uh, very much in the lead 1-0 in this top eight match. 1-0 lead for Aaron, but Justin put up a heck of a fight for this very first game. I think leaving the Charizard to its own devices was a bit of a mistake. It's tough. You see it paralyzed, you're moving before it, and there was always a good argument for attacking the partner, mm -hmm. you know, trying to go after that. Uh, I think there was so much pressure brought down by that Conkelda coming in that he made the right play to, to double target that down. But then watching a Pokemon get whittled away, uh, I do think the G-Max Wildfire caused a number of problems. Yes. And I think a lot of those knockouts were very much within reach because of that little bit of extra... I say little bit, it's actually a huge amount of extra damage <laughs> between turns. 
Yeah, the extra damage is definitely something that I think needs to be considered. I, we haven't gotten a chance to see too many Gigantamax Charizards yet, so it is very exciting to kind of see how Aaron has been playing with that particular Pokemon and what kind of utility it brings to the team. Yeah, I mean, it's it's something that I know a lot of people were excited about when it was revealed. And, you know, you don't get access to solar power with it, so mm -hmm. your damage output is, I don't want to say limited, but not as high as it, it potentially could be. But G-Max Wildfire, I'd argue, makes up for that. So while you're not doing the immediate damage with those big hits, those bits coming in between turns from the Wildfire kind of make up for it in a way and, and help you out a little bit with finding knockouts a little bit easier. Well, if you're Justin, then, how do you adjust to be able to take this game, too? You have, uh, just as a reminder, the team is Arcanine, Duraludon, Grimmsnarl, Togekiss, Gastrodon, and Mudsdale. And, you know, it, what do you bring to be able to deal with that Charizard or deal with other Pokemon that are on Eren's field a little bit more effectively? I think you've got to look at a kind of quicker answer to the Charizard. Uh, don't let it just set up the G-Max Wildfire. Don't let it sit there and deal damage all game. A uh, number of good options. I mean, Mudsdale does have access to a, a couple of rock type moves uh, which are going to be pretty good i think at dealing with charizard well known for that we've seen the duraliodon uh, struggles a little bit because of course uh, the steel typing and uh, even though it's a dragon type which usually is pretty good against fire types mm -hmm. the steel typing brings it back to neutral and doesn't appreciate those hits so well i was interested to see justin dynamax's togekiss because it did land obviously three max airstreams uh, which was good to see. He always had that advantage going mm -hmm. early on in the game. But it was still kind of a couple turns of just doing bits of damage. Where some of the other Dynamax options, I think, would be able to deal a whole lot more damage right off the bat. And just, and just go from there. Usually we see other Pokemon get the Dynamax energy. And I wonder if that's part of the adjustment that Justin needs to make which would be Dynamaxing something that can be a bit more potent towards that Charizard. Yeah, I mean, I think I think Duraludon or Mudsdale would be pretty good candidates for it. Uh, I think the lead there from Justin in particular was kind of there to scout out what was going on, right? And, right. and see exactly uh, how Aaron was going to lead this game, how he was going to try and play the set. So really nice play, but... I, I mean, personally, I like the look of Mudsdale as the Dynamax option. I think mm -hmm. that would provide some really nice coverage against things uh, like, obviously, the Charizard, uh, something like the Duraludon, the Togekiss. You'd be able to hit those for super effective damage. So you'd be able to, I think, get in a, a good position there. But what if Aaron reads that? Remember that when we look at Aaron's team, there's kind of two different modes of play that you can go with. You can go with something a little bit faster, or you can go with something that's a little bit slower. And if Aaron decides to read that Justin decides to go for the Mudsdale play to really kind of try to counter the Charizard, do you just bring Jalicent? <laughs> I mean, potentially, yes. Yeah. That's <laughs> definitely one of the options. Or do you just go after it with a Charizard? You know, Solar Beam becomes Max Overgrowth, and that's how you do your damage. I mean. Mudsdale's really good. If it's a stamina Mudsdale, we haven't seen it yet, so we can't, can't decide right now. But, you know, if it's going to be that stamina Mudsdale, hitting it with physical attacks is, is a tough ask. Stamina boosts the defense, and you're just sat there every turn doing less damage and boosting its defense, so you do even less damage next turn. It's not like it activates once, it activates every single time. Mm -hmm. So that could get a little bit tricky for him, so I think Charizard would be a good answer there. Bringing Jellison, I think, would be such a commitment to going to one side of play. That's true. Um, before the game, we were kind of talking about it with Aaron's team in particular. He has Tailwind and he has Trick Room as an option. And it was interesting to see that in that game, he didn't actually play either of them. He did the pseudo Tailwind a little bit with the Max Airstream. But I think committing to one in a, a future game might be the play. But we'll see exactly how he decides to, to play it out. He knows a little bit about how Justin's trying to stop him. Seeing that Thunder Wave means you, you've maybe got to look at the Grimmsnarl a little bit earlier and just go from that, then set up your kind of speed control of choice mm -hmm. and push through the game. It was interesting. The Grimmsnarl ended up showing us um, just really the Thunder Wave. So we still don't really know how that particular Grimmsnarl is trained or what it's carrying. So it still could be a pretty big threat to Aaron's team. Yeah, I mean, he gave up Fake Out, gave up Thunder Wave. There's no shock there. No, uh, nothing mm -hmm. in that move set that you've seen so far is, is out there and outlandish. But th the two remaining moves, 
may be a cause for concern uh, if you don't know what they are. Well, we're back in team preview. Justin and Aaron are going to have to figure out what they want to do for this next game. And like the first one, what leads come out are very critical for how this next game might go. Uh, I I wonder, I mean, they didn't take too much time to, to figure it out. So I think they both have a pretty, pretty clear idea of what they want their game plan to be going into this next game. Yeah, I think both of them had kind of figured it out pretty much before game one was over. And, and top <laughs> players like these two are going to spend every kind of minute that they have just figuring out exactly what they want to do. Uh, we talked about them changing up the leads and, and mixing it up. And actually, neither of them have decided to do that. Uh, they've decided exactly the same leads, Togekiss and Charizard for Aaron Trailer with Justin Kruba uh, with the Grimstyle and Togekiss of his own. So pretty much exactly where we were in game number one. And Justin's going to be the one pretty much asked to make the adaptations. Uh, there's no way you want to play the exact same game if you lost the game. Mm -hmm. So he's going to be the one trying to make changes through gameplay rather than the lead. I think that just speaks volumes to how good these two players are, though, that you, they don't need to necessarily make Pokemon ad adaptations, but just play style adjustments. And those are arguably a little bit harder to make when you are facing down such a tough opponent. But it is going to be the Gigantamax Charizard coming back out here. Turn one, four. And that might get matched. Let's find out. Mm, yep, we're going to see the Dynamax again. It looks like we're having a complete run back of game number one. Uh, obviously, there's going to be some changes in the moves, uh, but there you go. And turn one, double Dynamax. You know that these players are trying to make an early impact. Uh, Togekiss probably going to be asked to do the same kind of thing, set up the max airstreams, but I think what comes in in the back is going to have to make the changes. Uh, Grimmsnarl, there it is. Are, are we, are we going to see the exact same turn one? At least from the Grimmsnarl, we are going to see the fake out here. And the Max Airstream coming out from the Charizard is going to do the same amount of damage as we saw before. So no surprises here, at least. Going to be able to boost the speed for both Pokemon on Aaron's side of the field. But getting matched once again here by Justin with another Max Airstream from the Togekiss. But Togekiss getting significantly low. That was a critical hit. Yeah, critical hit there. I mean, it's still a two-hit knockout. It didn't change it in that regard. Uh, but then there's certainly more options to, to try and tidy it up. Uh, that said, I mean, it's exactly the same turn. Uh, Aaron could be looking at getting Thunder Waved again on his Charizard. So this isn't going to be the easiest turn for him. Maybe he's got a trick up his sleeve with his Togekiss, and we'll see exactly what it is. That trick being one of his more well-known moves in Follow Me. <laughs> Follow Me is going to make Togekiss on Aaron's side the, the center of attention here, and it will take the Thunder Wave in potentially Gigantamax Charizard's stead. This is pretty classic for what we saw from game one, but now this wildfire going into the Grimstarl, this, this really is just a repeat of what happened in game one, just this follow me. Yeah, the follow me is the change, but I think that change makes this game really, really nice for Aaron. Of course, he's now behind in those speed tiers, I guess, because he's taken two max air streams while he's only delivered one. Another critical hit on the Togekiss. It doesn't really matter, but it's nice to know you can hit them at some point. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're doing exactly the same thing. Both Pokemon in their Dynamax form have decided to sit there uh, and just launch attacks. Uh, I think the G-Max Wildfire, a really smart play there mm -hmm. uh, from Aaron's side of the field. Once again, get those little bits of extra damage down uh, and keep going. This time, though, it's not going to be a Duraludon match. It's going to be an Arcanine coming out for Justin and the Duraludon on Aaron's side. Yeah, I mean, so the, the first change... Uh, being the follow me puts Aaron in kind of a, a, a good position. He doesn't have his Dynamax Charizard, or his Gigantamax Charizard rather, uh, paralyzed. And that's certainly going to help. But then Justin makes a really great adaptation of his own. He knows that Aaron bought Duralidon uh, in that third kind of slot last time. So instead of bringing his own, he just brings the Arcanine, which is going to be able to start launching fire attacks into it uh, and getting some good damage down. Let's see if this Arcanine or this Duraludon stick to the field. Charizard now going for the Max Airstream will go into the Togekiss slot, not doing too much except for, again, getting that speed boost. Aaron is a little bit behind in that regard, like you mentioned. So the Duraludon also going to get the speed boost too. I think that's per particularly important, but another Max Airstream into the Charizard. But 
no yeah. critical hit this time. Yeah, Justin knows what he likes. He likes to, to boost up his Togekiss. The Togekiss now has three speed boosts. The Arcanine are just going to be the one. Same for the Duraldi down there. But Arcanine hitting that Snarl nice and early on. That's going to help out against both the Pokemon on Aaron's side of the field. Duraldidon does go with the Flash Cannon, though. Uh, not huge amounts of damage, even with the Life Orb. And I think that Snarl's made that attack much more manageable. I would agree with that. Snarl, I think a, an excellent adjustment coming out from Justin here, just to make sure that the Pokemon on Aaron's side can't be such offensive pressure for Aaron. And now this Duraldon and Charizard have both taken those special attack drops, and that's going to be pretty important, especially because the Dynamax turns have ended. I think what's important for Aaron here, though, is to deal with the Togekiss. That's always going to be the, the problem, uh, depending on what he has in the back. We are going to see it now uh, as he switches, and it is the Conkledor once again. Uh, so really making sure he deals with this Togekiss early on. The Blast Burn is going to be the answer to it, and this Conkledor coming in in a nice position. Can't be intimidated now. Justin down to his last two, uh, being able to to see what he can fire back. The Conkelder is going to take that so, so well. Yeah, that is a great, great portion. I, I, that was a great switch in from Aaron, I, just knowing that Duraludon might take a hit here. Uh, and it's actually going to be a Duraludon for Justin's last Pokemon. Yeah, I mean, he's bought the exact same four. Uh, he's not actually changed them apart from the order they come in. And once again, this Conkelder is going to be a huge problem. It can land some really nice attacks uh, onto this Duraludon. It does become even harder to deal with with Drain Punch, getting its own health back, um, being able to make sure that mm -hmm. it can just keep itself nice and healthy while some of these Pokemon are getting worn down. That uh, could be a little bit of a problem. Uh, we didn't see, actually, uh, the item on Duraludon in the, uh, on Justin's side of the field in the first game, so this could be quite interesting. Charizard, of course, stuck recharging. Blast Burn does have a bit of a, you know, an issue in that regard. <laughs> Well, that's going to give a little bit of time here to Justin to go for the offensive and have a heat wave. And then the Draco Meteor just to fin. Oh, Ooh. the Conkelder actually holds on. Cheeky little Conkelder not getting knocked out by a combination of heat wave and Draco Meteor. And this is what I was talking about with the recovery uh, from the Drain Punch wow. is going to help out. Duraludon holding on, though, even lower on its health bar than Conkelda. Duraludon revealing its item will be the weakness policy, but I'd be curious to see if it's given the opportunity to deal with that. Duraludon doesn't no. get to use that weakness policy because of the G-Max Wildfire Flames and is going to be just Arcanine against three Pokemon on Aaron's side of the field. Uh, that is really, really nice for, for Aaron there. He missed the knockout, of course, with the Drain Punch, but... The G-Max Wildfire still taking effect and is enough to just deal with that last Pokemon. Arcanine has to do a whole lot here. Somehow I don't think it's going to get that opportunity. Dick sell quite a bit of damage there from the Blast Burn. And yeah, Charizard's going to have to take a bit of time to recharge there. But the Drain Punch coming in from the Conkelder is going to be enough to get the knockout. And that's going to be Aaron taking this series. Yeah, Aaron playing a fantastic series across both games one.